Hello Amigans, it's time for another video starring my Amiga 1 X1000 computer. That uh, rather classy looking old girl on the right is not the X1000. That's a vintage Commodore Amiga 3000 from the early 1990s. I keep the X1000 stashed away handy under the desk. The monitor you see sitting on top of the 3000 does double duty. It is both a display for the old 3000 as well as a second display for the X1000. And that's what today's video is about. Setting up dual displays with the Aeon Amiga 1 X1000 and how I use those two displays with my computer. This is how things typically look when I boot up my X1000. The primary display is a larger 24 inch Samsung monitor it's a uh, 1900 by 1200 display that's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. The secondary display is a uh, older Dell monitor that I have. It's probably 19 inches. Uh, it sets up a resolution of 1280 by 1024 in its native mode. On the display on the right I have directory Opus 5 running right now. I have this running typically almost almost all the time that I'm on the computer. Uh, it's a great application for moving around between files for uh, managing, manipulating files, whatever you need to do in a system. You can use it in full workbench replacement mode or do like I'm doing and use it in addition to good old workbench which we have on the main screen here. When I think about workbench I often call it good old workbench because it's instantly familiar to anyone who has used and loved the Amiga operating system going back to its earliest days. Everything is in a familiar place and it just fits like an old comfortable pair of shoes. Here I'm running the Odyssey web browser. It's a modern tabbed uh, internet web browser. Uh, also going to open up a video here. Show off some of the Amiga's multitasking abilities. Commonplace on operating systems these days but uh, Amiga just just about invented this stuff. Uh, here I'm going to open up a video with mPlayer and navigate my way to the video. I'm a Doctor Who fan, so I have a lot of Doctor Who episodes on my computer. Now to move between the screens, to, uh, between the uh, displays on and the Amiga here, it's the same as, as moving between the virtual screens uh, on any Amiga, even if you only have one display. Uh, you could use the gadgets up at the top right of the screen to move between the layers of the windows. I've just bounced my mouse over to the directory Opus screen. You could also use the traditional keyboard equivalents of Amiga M, Amiga N to move back and forth between the screens. And there's even a utility or two that you could probably find on os4depot.net uh, to make navigating between the screens easily done. So here I am on the directory open screen, uh, manipulating new windows, doing some work over here, and back on the main uh, workbench screen. I've got the web browser still displayed, could be looking at a document there. Uh, I've got the video still playing in the mPlayer window. I have the video playing in full screen mode. Drop it back down to window mode. And you could still have multiple screens within a display just as you always could on Amiga. I'm going to uh, roll the uh, workbench screen down and you can see I've got Blender running in the background. That's a very modern 3D program ported over to Amiga from other operating systems. So I use a mix of old and new software. But we've got that working in the background and go back to my workbench screen and still have stuff happening here.
Now, I told you I like to let these monitors do double duty for me. This display on the right, if I switch it over from its digital to its analog input, you can see that I am now feeding it the uh, screen display from my Amiga 3000 vintage computer. Uh, the program that's up on the screen right now is an old but still fun to use 3D landscape generating program called Vista Pro. I'm going to move the camera back over to my main display and I have a KVM switch uh, which allows me to connect multiple computers to this this uh, this display. If I switch that over to uh, the number three switch here on my four-way KVM box, uh, this is uh, my Power Mac G5, uh, starting to be a classic in its own right. Here it's running a more modern 3D generating program, 3D landscape generating program called Bryce. And this is running on my Power Mac G5, a Power PC computer. Apple doesn't make them anymore. This, this one dates back to about 2004, 2005. So it's, it's got a bit in common with uh, the Amiga 1 here using a Power PC uh, based chip, the uh, PA6T from PA Semiconductor. One configuration that I use quite often on my X1000 uh, is, is this setup for the NewTek LightWave software. This is the uh, old Amiga version from the 1990s. Uh, very capable software still. Uh, LightWave comes in two halves. There's the layout half where you do your staging, set up your animations, set up your 3D world. And you have the modeler half, which is the side of the software where you create your objects, your 3D objects for populating your world. Here I've got layout on the main screen and on the secondary screen I have modeler running. This actually works pretty well for me because as a secondary screen I have a more squarish aspect ratio monitor and modeler seems to prefer that. The, the application was written before anybody was using widescreen computer monitors and it doesn't seem to be very aware of that aspect ratio so uh, the objects that you create if, if not set up in a uh, 4 to 3 monitor ratio tend to be stretched out so this, this just works better for this whole program uh, but anyway I do this quite often here I have the ProText word processor on the right hand screen and that's a picture of our dog Duncan uh, loaded up in Sketchblock on the main screen Here's Hollywood Designer running a presentation on the left hand screen. Internet Relay Chat running on the right hand screen. The game Dale Hard Shovel running in full screen on the right. Back to Workbench and we're starting up Amiga App on the left. Here's inside my X1000 and the two graphics cards that feed the dual displays. The top card is a PowerColor Radian HD4850 card. It's the one my computer shipped with from Amiga Kit. Below that is a, a, a higher grade Radian HD6850 card, also from PowerColor. I use that for the main display now. One disadvantage to uh, how we have to do dual displays in the X1000 is that two cards are needed to feed those displays. On other operating systems, you can get two display units to be fed by a single card. Unfortunately, we don't have that capability, so it's double the cards, double the expense, double the power, double the heat, but uh, plenty of room inside the X1000 to add these cards, so why not go for it? Complete directions for setting up dual displays on an Amiga 1 X1000 computer are available from Aeon on their website for registered users. Here's a quick look at what I had to do after looking at those directions. First, check in an egg. You gotta know what the card is called, and that might mean installing it first as a single card. In my case, I had a Radian HD 4850 card, but the Ranger System Profiling Utility informed me that the card calls itself Radian M98. So in the devs monitors drawer, I found the PCI graphics monitor driver. That's your main card. In my system, now a Radian HD6850. I duplicated that driver and called it Radian M98.
In the tool types for that driver, I changed board name to Radian M98 and then also changed the CMP length to 10, which is the number of characters in the Radian M98 name. After rebooting, screens from both cards should be available to the system. You can verify this by using the Screen Mode Preferences Editor. You can use either display for programs as you choose. In many cases, you can select the screen mode for a program within the application or perhaps within a MUI setting window. You can also use the Screens Preferences Editor to set up named screens on either display. You can even use old modes promotion utilities such as Mode Pro to set up desired screen modes for specific applications. And that's it.